the unreal often live side by side. Beyond belief, fact or fiction. Hosted by Jonathan Frakes. We live in a world where the real and the unreal live side by side, where substance is disguised as illusion and the only explanations are unexplainable. Can you separate truth from fantasy? To do so, you must break through the web of your experience and open your mind to things beyond belief. When you're behind the wheel at night, is there anything more disturbing than someone behind you who's driving with bright lights? Sometimes drivers do it to let you know they want to pass. Sometimes they're unaware their brights are on. And sometimes, as in our next story, the reason is much more ominous. How did I wind up here? All I wanted to do was rent a car and visit my sick grandmother. Now I was totally lost. And something's telling me I better figure out this map by myself. I've learned you don't show weakness in a situation like this. Care for a little more? No thanks. Guess I've had enough. Oh, take care then. Oh no. I hear them at the pool table. I can do it. Yeah. You don't know me, Bob. Yeah. Watch and learn, old man. Uh, hi, my name's uh, Gunner. How you doing? Actually, I'm a little tired. Well, do you mind if I sit down? Uh, I'd really like to buy you a cup of coffee. Well, thank you. But, um, well, I've already had three cups. And I gotta get back on the road. Oh, I'll get this for you. That's very sweet. You are. I want to run out of here, but I'm going to walk out calmly. I can hear their ugly comments, and I can feel their eyes on me. No trophy tonight, Gunner. I don't hear any footsteps behind me. That's good. I wish it were a bigger parking lot so I could disappear between the cars. But I'm in plain view right now. Maybe I'm being paranoid, but I feel like I'm being followed. The quicker I get out of here, the better I'll feel. The next place I stop is going to be a lot safer than that bar. Oh no, what's this? I'll bet it's that creep from the bar. Why does he have his high beams on? They're blinding me. Well, I'm not going to stop. What are you doing?
it is him. Get out of the car, lady! Get out of the car, lady! Now! Get out of the car, lady! Now! Move! I have to stay calm. I have to stay calm. Move. Hurry! You in the back seat! Get your hands up! Get your hands up! Come out nice and slow. Nice and slow. Drop the knife! Drop the knife! Don't move. I'm really sorry that I scared you, but I saw the creep in the back seat. That's why I was flashing my bright so they keep him from attacking you. Thank you. Well, maybe now we can uh, have that cup of coffee, eh? Yeah? What are you looking at? Turn around. An intriguing story, to say the least. The man we perceive to be a villain turns out a hero. The bright lights that seemed so threatening were really beacons of protection. Does this story of terror on the highway seem false to you? Or is your judgment being blinded by the truth? Find out if this story is true or false at the end of our show. But next... Help! 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 Now, come on, come on, guys. Just... All right, fine, take the jacket, take the jacket. Here, here, take the watch. We're going to have that too. And the pants. Help! Help! Is it? Help! 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 I'm being, I'm being pants! Help! A man attacked in a park discovers a magical ability to fight back. Coming up on Beyond Belief, Fact or Fiction. Some call them bag ladies. To others, they are vagrants. And some consider them angels of the streets. Are these street people merely collecting cast-off rubbish? Or are there treasures to be discovered in their receptacles? Gloria was more than a bag lady. She was a treasure hunter. And within her treasure chest is an item with a power so great it can do battle with fate itself. Lenny Fields was an out-of-shape comedy writer. He made his living writing clever lines for television shows, stand-up comedians, and magazine articles. And although he had an icy wit, he had a warm heart. In fact, on his morning jogs, he always stopped to exchange a quip or two with Gloria, the park's resident bag. Easy, lady. sonny boy. You're moving too fast. You shouldn't be rushing life. You're right. Thanks to jogging, more people are collapsing in perfect health than ever before. <laughs> the only thing that I try to exercise is kindness. <laughs> Why don't you let me give you a couple of bucks so you can get a good hot meal? Just watch the cholesterol. You know I don't like taking money from you. Uh, so where are you living these days? The old zoo. Well, listen. Just be careful and watch yourself, will you? I gotta run. That was Lenny. Always more concerned about another's safety than his own. But today, he should have worried for himself. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this guy, huh? <laughs> I think he needs some more, too. You think he's gonna make it? No. No. That's a nice jogging suit he's got there. I think it looks better on me. What do you think? Hey there, hold up there. How are you doing? Uh, fine. Thank you, suit. Thank oh, you, suit. Thanks. Uh, Great jacket. I, I got it on sale at that, that sporting goods store just before you get to the park, or right on the corner there. That uh, big one there, yeah. They're having a big sale. Uh, you'll get a good deal on I got a great deal on this. And, uh, and I like this jacket. No, this is mine. Yeah, we like this. No, you know what, guys? I, no. I, I oh, like guys, this. Look, guys, look. I know. I know. I know. You just want some money. Here, here. I got. I got. I got. I got some money here. Here. I think I got a few bucks. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, here. Yeah, I got yeah, some money here. Look. Here. You know. I think I like that too. No, wait. But we want oh, all oh, your fine, money. Fine. Fine. Take. Take the money. Take the money. It's and yours. the jacket. No, but it's my jacket. Great. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, all right. Oh, come, come on, guys. Oh, oh nice watch. Wait, help! 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 Is it help? Help! 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 I'm being, I'm being pants! Help! Gage! What? No, wait, guys! No, guys, 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 please! Hold it! Hold it! Guys, guys, please don't do this to me! Please! Hey! Hey! Go Gloria! Gloria, it's me! Over here! The cage, over here! Oh my God! What happened to you? Oh, two guys stopped me and I got mugged. Can you see if you can get this door open? I'm freezing. Yeah. Hold on. 
starting to feel like Charlton Heston in Planet of the Apes. Don't worry. I've got all kinds of things in here. Hey, what are you standing there for? Come on down and step into my fitting room. You've really got something for me in there? Uh, here, put this on. I can't put this on. It looks silly. It's not really my color. Really? You wouldn't believe it, but some people think I look kind of silly. You know, it's not what other people think of you that matters. It's what you think of yourself. Well. And so it was that a discarded Halloween costume from Gloria's cart changed his persona from Lenny Fields to that of the legendary Mighty Man. Whoa! Hang on there. It's a bird, it's a plate, it's Super Jerk. Nice cape. Hey, Super Jerk. What did I get one of these? Easy, we Ooh. missed you too. <laughs> what is that? Mighty Man. <laughs> Mighty Man. Nice cape, though. You know, I'm telling you. That is great! This time, we're taking your underwear. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh. Hey, Gloria, you were right. This outfit is my color. See, what did I tell you? Hey, can I keep this a little longer? Sure. I've got a class reunion coming up, and there's a couple of neighborhood bullies that'll be there. <laughs> hey, how about we go get a bite to eat? Fine. As long as it's a big, juicy, chili cheeseburger. I think I'll stick to the salad. So, was it the costume that gave him his newfound strength? Or did Lenny have the inner courage all the time? History is filled with stories of magic clothing. Joseph's coat of many colors, Jason and the Golden Fleece and the millions of soldiers who have suddenly found untapped courage by wearing the uniform of their country. Is our tale based upon reality, or is this story stitched together by a thread of lies? We'll find out if this story is true or false at the end of our show, but next. I was wondering why some of you didn't answer the essay question, you know, what I want to do with my life. Hmm? You know, any answer at all, even a sentence, would have been worth ten points. You know why I didn't answer it? Because hmm? I ain't sure I'm going to even live to see 18. A teacher encounters a strange student and terror in the classroom on Beyond Belief, Fact or Fiction. Is there a more important job than that of a teacher? To influence, inspire, and educate young minds is the noblest of occupations. Vanessa Robinson is a born teacher. But lately, she has become disillusioned. The paperwork on her desk seems like a mountain. The minds of her students seem closed. But she's about to meet a student who will change all that. A student in a class by himself. I had just been put in charge of this class, but I was already getting to know them. I was very good at matching names with faces, and I had memorized the entire class roster. I was a natural. I guess that's why when I was young, I always knew what I wanted to be. I didn't want to be a nurse or even a lawyer. I wanted to be a teacher. I wanted to educate young minds and inspire them to greatness. But now I've become a babysitter rather than a teacher. Keith, lose the ball, please. Thank you. 
Lately, I find myself thinking more and more that maybe I made the wrong choice for my life. I'm wondering what it would be like to sell real estate or to be a travel agent and visit all those exotic places. Deirdre, can we lose the mirror? All right, time's up, pens down. I was wondering why some of you didn't answer the essay question. You know, what I want to do with my life. Hmm? You know, any answer at all, even a sentence, would have been worth ten points. You know why I didn't answer it? Because hmm? I ain't sure I'm going to even live to see 18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. But how many of the rest of you feel the same way? Yeah. Well... Um, we'll talk about this later. Please put your tests on my desk, right side up. Thank you. Hey, hey hang on, hang on. Out of here. Hey, go. I wondered if somehow I had failed these students. Was I partly responsible for their attitude? I was suddenly aware of one student who was still at his desk. Uh, class is over. I mean, do you need it, something? He was a student I didn't seem to recognize. I didn't know his face, and I didn't know his name either. Um, w wait a second. Hold on. I couldn't understand it. He was nowhere in sight. Something made me close the door behind me, and then I started to read the paper. His name was Rudy Hernandez. I was sure there was no Rudy in my class, and certainly not one that could write like this. What do you want to do with your life by Rudy Hernandez? I want to be a teacher. Helping others is the most important thing anyone can do with their life. The police may help fight crime, but teachers help fight ignorance. And ignorance breeds hate and poverty. Of course, being a teacher isn't easy. A good teacher explains. A superior teacher demonstrates. But a truly great teacher inspires. When a great teacher helps save one student, she helps save the whole world. I think you are that kind of teacher. You are the kind of teacher that I would want to be. How did you get in here? I, I didn't hear you. Did you write this essay? Are you Rudy Hernandez? Just answer me. Are you Rudy Hernandez? Look, I'll call someone. No, don't take another step. Accident of fate. If he hadn't made me leave my seat, I would have been shot. But his face seemed to show it was not an accident. When I turned away, he was gone. God, are you all right? No. Should I call a nurse? No, I'm okay. The police are on the way. That's the second drive by this year. You're lucky you weren't killed. Yeah, thanks to that student. What student? Rudy Hernandez. Oh, that's impossible. Why? Rudy Hernandez is dead. No. No, he was here. I can prove it. I, I have an essay that he wrote. The essay was gone, too. Well, I knew Rudy. He was a brilliant student who always had time to tutor others. He had a full scholarship waiting for him at Princeton. My God, what happened? Before he could graduate, he was killed in a drive-by shooting. Somehow, a student who had died years ago had saved my life in more ways than one.
Was Vanessa actually visited by the ghost of Rudy Hernandez? If not, who was that student whose paper she read? Someone caused Vanessa to suddenly move away from the window out of harm's way. Was it another student using Rudy's name? If so, where did he go? And what happened to the paper he handed in? Is this classroom story based on fact? Or are we simply telling tales out of school? We'll find out if this story is true or false at the end of our show, but next. Now look at this one, Mom. Oh, that's great. Sweetie, why don't you show that to your Aunt Bonnie, huh? Look. Hey. Hey, there's something really familiar about these scripts. An innocent child's drawings reveal a hidden mystery on Beyond Belief, Fact or Fiction. The imagination of a child. What really goes on in a mind still unspoiled by most of the conventions and inhibitions of society? Should drawings like these be simply thought of as the expressions of innocent minds? Four-year-old Billy Potter is drawing lots of pictures lately. Pay close attention to them, analyze them, appreciate them. But whatever you do, don't dismiss them as childish scrawls. There's a sign on the dotted line there. Okay. Suppose the one thing certain about life is uh, that we eventually leave it. <laughs> Let's hope no time soon. <laughs> there you go. Okay. That's your copy. Okay. <clears throat> Earl Potter, with his wife in her last months of pregnancy, takes out a life insurance policy, hoping not to need it for a long, long time. So, the policy is bought and paid for. If anything should happen to me, you and the baby will be taken care of. Just stop it. Don't talk like that. You know it scares me. Well, think of it as a promise I'm making. I love you. Ditto. Hey, slow down. Lately, all you have to do is rush, rush, rush. You know that? Well, how else am I going to get that new account? Which would mean a promotion for us. All I need is you and Billy, honey. I don't need a new promotion. And money. Don't ever forget money. Oh, here you go. I'll talk to you later. Talk to you go. Bye, Dad. Earl? One week after Earl's death, Marlene and her sister Bonnie are packing up for a move to Bonnie's house, while Billy keeps his mind occupied by drawing pictures. Look, Mom. Thanks, honey. You sure there's going to be enough room for me and Billy at your house? Marlene, we've already discussed this. Now, you and Billy will sleep in Sarah's room. She really doesn't want it. Hey, come on. It's going to be okay. It'll be fun sleeping under the same roof again. Thank you. Thank you. Look! Oh, that is great. Why don't you go make me some more, huh? Okay. God, if I could just find that insurance policy, you know? I never wanted to talk about this stuff with Earl, and now I'm broke, and it's my own fault. Don't blame yourself. You looked everywhere. There's nothing else you could do. Sweetie, why don't you show that to your Aunt Bonnie, huh? Look. Hey. Hey, there's something really familiar about these scribbles. Marlene. It's shorthand. What? These scribbles are shorthand. You see these lines right here? Billy spelled the word daddy. What? Billy? What are you drawing over there? I don't know. Just pictures. 
these pictures. Oh. Hey, wait a second. This is really weird. I mean, look at these. These are words. First Village Trust. First Village Trust, that's a bank. Uh-huh. There's one in town. And these, these are numbers. 1104. Maybe a bank account number. I don't know what's going on. But you have to go find out. It's, uh, Peters? Potter. Earl Potter. P-O-T-T-E-R Potter. Yes, it seems to your late husband kept a safe deposit box here. Was it box number 1104? That's right. Do you have a key? No. Uh, can we open it anyway? It might be empty. Look, you see We'd my son... We have to he... drill the lock. There's a $200 fee. Can I pay you after we open the box? Please. Please. One hour later, a locksmith shows up to open the safety deposit box. Marlene Potter, a woman down on her luck, clings to one last fragile hope. A hope that somehow the symbols that are showing up in Billy's drawings have a special meaning to their lives. Perhaps they are communications from her late husband, Earl, the man who is keeping something in lockbox 1104. It's lighter than I thought. the answer here did aunt bonnie know the truth all along and chose to secretly add the symbols to billy's drawings or was a father's spirit really guiding the hands of a child could a child far too young to even comprehend the symbols for shorthand communicate those symbols so perfectly aren't there child prodigies who can play the piano before they can talk is this story of automatic writing an honest one or does your instinct tell you to simply write it off We'll find out if this story is true or false at the end of our show. But next. Keep thinking, what if something like this happened to him? I wish there was something else we could do. Remember that horse story we covered a few years ago? You know, that old gelding that toured with the circus? Cow mystery. Yeah. Owner claimed he was psychic or something. A missing child and an animal with unexplainable powers on Beyond Belief, Fact or Fiction. Horses have long been thought of as magical creatures, from Pegasus, the winged stallion, to the diving horse of Atlantic City. They have been applauded, gambled on, even worshipped. The horse you're about to meet never ran a race or carried a soldier into battle. Yet he is the stuff that legends are written about. The horse is named Count Mystery, and the mystery is, how does he do what he does? For years, Count Mystery has been doing his act at rodeos, county fairs, and the like, Ask Count Mystery a question, and he will spell out the answer by turning over a series of special letters. And as if this weren't fantastic enough, Count Mystery seems to also possess psychic powers. He has been responsible for the solving of eight major crimes in the last 20 years. And in a few days, Count Mystery's colorful legend will become linked to the fate of young Tanner Johnson. Tanner is a boy like so many his age. He gets bored. He daydreams. And he loses track of time and even location. Today, Tanner is exploring. And to really explore, you have to go places that you've never been before. Tanner spent lots of days like this. Ever since his father divorced his mother last year, Tanner goes for long walks, looking for things. Obviously, Tanner's father was an important part of his life. But there is another man who's about to become very important to Tanner. In fact, Tanner's seen him many times before on the 6 o'clock news. Over 24 hours has passed since little Tanner Jansen disappeared. The four-year-old was last seen playing in front of his house wearing a red sweatshirt and blue jeans. 
Neighborhood search parties have been put together, and the Ludlow police have asked everyone to keep their eyes open. We'll have more as this story unfolds. This is Gerald McBride, WRX News reporting. Now, these missing kids just break my heart. I mean, they rarely find them alive. Yeah, I feel sorry for the mother. Lewis, did you get those bloodhounds from Atkinsville? Yeah, still no sign of the boy. Did your station get any leads on this? No. This is Emma Jansen. Oh, Miss Jansen, I want you to know our station's gonna keep covering this story until we find your son. I just know that Tanner's out there somewhere. I just know it. I don't know who'd take him. You know, my sister's got a kid her kid's age. Keep thinking, what if something like this happened to him? Wish there was something else we could do. Remember that horse story we covered a few years ago? You know, that old gelding that toured with the circus? Cow mystery. Yeah. Owner claimed he was psychic or something. Still catching flack for covering that. Yeah, there was some evidence that that was true. Even if it was, that horse was 100 years old then. Well, let's just call somebody and get him on it. I mean, it can't hurt. Fine, call. It's now 48 hours since the Jensen boys' disappearance. Volunteers from Ludlow continue to search the area. If you'd like to volunteer, please call the station. Gerald McBride, WRX reporting. I mean, something's bound to turn up soon. I mean, he couldn't have wandered that far. What, are you kidding? If someone snatched this kid, the possibilities are endless. Yeah. The horse is still alive. If you want to go see him, we've arranged it. Yes. What? Finally, some good news. The horse's owner called the station. He's still alive. Should have seen this when we were traveling together with the circus. Oh, he was something. You know, people travel from miles around, ask him questions about crops and about love. One time, he found a wife that went missing. Missing wife? Mm-hmm. You see, in those days, when a wife went missing, we looked. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do? Tell him I was coming? You know why I'm here? Mm hmm? Good. Wow. <laughs> here, we'll take him out to the board and see what he has to say. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> so what should I do? Ask your question. You said you knew why I was here. <laughs> Tanner, Tanner, do you know where the boy is? You're saying the boy's alive, but where? Well, well the boy's alive in a well, but where? NW, and the northwest, 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 northwest. He's in a well in the northwest. Where? O L D O O O O. in the well up in the old camp. Yeah. yeah. I got no signal for my cellular. I got to use your phone. Where is it? Inside. Oh. Inside. Good boy. Good boy.
can't believe you dragged me out here. Better be good. Tanner! Tanner! Help! Over there. Mommy, help! Help! Go get the red. We found him. Get his mother. He's alive. It's okay, son. We'll just take it easy. Relax. I gotta get you out. Your mother's coming. Tanner Jansen has been rescued and appears to be in good condition. Ms. Jansen, would you care to say a few words? Uh, yes. Um, I I'd like to thank all the good people out there for volunteering and helping me through this terrible crisis. God bless you. And I'd like to give a special thanks to you, Mr. McBride, for helping me find my son. Thank you. I'm just glad the boy's okay. Well, this was a story that certainly ended on a happy note. Be sure to tune in tomorrow when I reveal how I was led to Tanner. Until then, Gerald McBride, WRX News. Okay, so who supplied the lead? Let's just say I got it straight from the horse's mouth. Could this story possibly be true? Can an animal possess psychic powers? Doesn't the Farmer's Almanac base mysteriously accurate predictions on animal behavior? And haven't dogs and cats been known to predict earthquakes? But this story of an equine psychic, is it an honest retelling of an actual event? Or is it a horse of a different color? Coming up, we'll find out which of our stories tonight were fact and which were fiction when Beyond Belief returns. Now it's time to see which of our stories are based on actual events and which are total works of fiction. The tale of the woman who was saved by the high beams of a truck. True or false? based on an actual event? No way. It's a made-up tale. Let's look at the story of the bag lady with the magic costume. Whoa! <laughs> Hang on there! It's a bird, it's a plane, it's Super Jerk! Nice cape! Hey, Super Jerk. Where did I get one of these? Easy. We Whoa. missed you, too. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Mighty Man. <laughs> Mighty Man. <laughs> nice cape, though. You know, I'm telling you. <laughs> that is great. This time, we're taking your underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think this story of sudden strength and courage was real? You're right. It happened. According to first-hand interviews conducted by author Robert Traylons. Now what about the tale of the teacher whose life was saved by the ghost of a dead student? Did you write this essay? Are you Rudy Hernandez? Just answer me. Are you Rudy Hernandez? Look, I'll call someone. No, don't take another step. Did you guess that this story of the student's spirit was fictional? You're right. It never happened. Let's take another look at the child whose scribblings turned out to be a message in shorthand. This is really weird. I mean, look at these. These are words. 
First Village Trust. First Village Trust, that's a bank. Uh-huh. There's one in town. And these, these are numbers. 1104. Maybe a bank account number. <sighs> I don't know what's going on. But you have to go find out. Miss uh, Peters? Potter. Yeah. Earl Potter. P-O-T-T-E-R Potter. Yes, it seems that your late husband kept a safe deposit box here. Did you think this was inspired by an actual event? Yes, it was. The horse with psychic powers. What was your opinion of this story? N.W. N.W. and uh, Northwest! Northwest! Northwest. He's in a well in the Northwest. Where? like this one really exists? Yes. This story happened. So how accurate did your perception turn out to be? Were you able to identify fact from fiction or have we once again demonstrated that certain things in life can never be explained? They are the events that we must classify as beyond belief. I'm Jonathan Franks. Join us for more stories on Beyond Belief. Fact or fiction?